Hello and welcome to the new look AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Womblies. That's right, after having acquired 14 new players, we're starting one of them. It's Lua Lua, for whom we paid too much money. But he is good, and he is going to be our starting left midfielder. And even though I am frustrated with him, and indeed with the entire process of buying players uh, on FIFA 18, I am excited to welcome him to the club. Also excited to be against a manager who's wearing a baseball cap. If I had known that was an option, believe you me, I'd be doing it. Here he is, Kazenga Lua Lua, our new midfielder. We arrived for $3.2 million and a wage that is way too high for his skill level. Today I'm going to be solving a problem from Project for Awesome donor Charlie Spears who writes, Hi John, my problems are with reading. I read a lot, like two books, two books a week, but I always feel like a liar saying I read two books a week because one of them is always an audiobook and I don't know if that should count. Does it still count as reading if I listen to a book instead of reading it? My other problem is reading critically. I really enjoy reading but often don't see symbolism or understand metaphors. So this is like... One of the uh, one of the horrors I think of of the internet is that um, everybody's opinions from all of time are like lodged inside of the internet, and if your opinions change or you grow up um, and and you understand that like you know you used to what you used to think was right turned out to be wrong, the people um, can still dredge up those old opinions and. Um, say mean things about you and and talk about what an idiot you are and like you're not on some level like you're kind of like not allowed to grow because you become like kind of married to these old opinions that you had uh, because like the consequences of like trying to change them that's Lua Lua's first contribution to AFC Wimbledon to have um, to be immediately uh, dispossessed of the ball by a member of the West Brom defense which is a very bad sign and we've given up a goal and, I mean, darkness everywhere. I don't know what else to say. That's, I mean, it's on me. Obviously, I probably should have done better there. Nothing Rafa could do at that distance. I mean, that's a, that's a manager's goal. So I got to take responsibility for it. But I'm still going to blame Lua Lua because that's what my heart says to do. All right. I mean, Anoma here. I think this guy's got a bright future for Wimbledon. I mean, he almost scored there. I bring that up because I used to have this very strong and, in retrospect, extremely stupid opinion that, like, reading audiobooks was not reading, or that it was not, th that you couldn't um, listen to an audiobook with the same level of attention and, um, like, detail orientedness, I guess, that you could read a book. This is an incredibly stupid opinion. I am b embarrassed to have ever had it. I was wrong. Um, but. Because the uh, internet isn't great at um, at forgiveness <laughs> or 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 noting um, noting noting change and growth, uh, because I mean you know like it's 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 nice to be it's nice to be like horrified and outraged by the stupid opinions that famous people have, um, and like especially on Tumblr, I expressed a lot of stupid opinions between say 2011 and 2017. And yeah, what are you going to do? Um, I, in, I wish that I had not expressed those opinions, but I did, and so it goes. But yeah, I used to. I, I don't actually know that this is one of one of the stupid opinions I had that uh, that ended up, um, you know, uh, being being widely seen for the stupid opinion it was by uh, people who uh, wanted to uh, talk about how stupid my opinions were. But they've hit the post. We are we are getting abs. I mean. It, how is this the same team that beat Manchester City? <laughs> is my main question. Um, we are getting just absolutely beat, played off the pitch right now. Um, but I, I, I don't know that I actually don't know that this that this stupid opinion ever ever was one that got widely spread. Is what I'm saying. But I did used to have it, and it was very very stupid. Like, I'm not sure. I don't think it was a particularly well considered thought that I had. And I think it was about the way that I read books versus the way that I listened to audiobooks. I.e., it wasn't really about like a, an objective truth or other people's experiences. It was about my experience that I assumed was universal because it was mine. And you know, that's you know, we we all have pro we all have a, have challenges when it comes to not universalizing our experience. 
In fact, reading audiobooks or listening to audiobooks um, is it, it, it's its own form of engagement. And like, I am not here to tell other people how to engage with with stories and like thinking that I know the best way how to engage with stories uh, is was dumb and embarrassing. And I'm, I was wrong. I think listening to audiobooks is a way of engaging with a st- with a with a written story that can be endlessly rich and endlessly deep and I, I i think that like in it's mostly a problem of language like we have this word reading that describes engagement with a story in a way that doesn't apply to audiobooks because when you are listening to an audiobook you're not looking at text which is what the word reading describes but the experience of reading is and the experience of reading i think for most at least for me is not exactly like the experience of listening to an audiobook but that doesn't mean that one is better than the other or one is deeper or richer than the other and that's what i've come to understand um in the years since I held that opinion. Because now when I listen to audiobooks, I find that I am you know, engrossed in the story in a way that is really profound. And, that it, and, and, and in some ways, it's different from reading, but it's not better or worse. And I feel like if I've listened to a book, I always say I've read it. And I don't think that you should not say that you've read, that you've read it just because you've only listened to it. And even that phrase, like, only listen to it, implies a level of, like, superiority for reading that I think is just inaccurate. Like, if you've listened to a book, you know the book. You may not know it in the same way that you would know it if you read it, but you also won't know it in the same way if you read it as if you listen to it. So I I think I don't personally, I say that I've read a book if, if I've listened to it, and I don't and I, I, I do think that, like, we have a, we have a l- language challenge in English. Oh, my God, I've scored a beautiful goal. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. And I've scored a magnificent goal. And I'm, a, and I'm doing a dance. And I'm, I, I've gone from thinking that I'm part of the worst team in the world to understanding that Anoma and Lua Lua are now the stars of the greatest enterprise in the history of humanity. We're going to go from 1-0 down. We're going to win 2-1. Magic is in the air. As for your other question about uh, reading symbolically or reading for metaphor, reading critically, um, I uh, I think I think reading critically is is a important way to read. I don't think it's the important way to read, and I don't think it's the way everyone reads. And I don't think like it. I don't think that it makes you a worse reader. Like Salinger famously uh, dedicated one of his books. To the reader who reads and runs, to like readers who can read a book, enjoy the book, and not uh, meditate endlessly on the symbolic resonances of a book. To me, symbolism ought to work on the on the reader, whether or not the reader is conscious of it. So when you say like, "Oh, I, I, I you know, I don't notice symbols, or I'm not aware of, I, you know, I, I can't read critically, I don't see metaphor," like. It, it shouldn't it shouldn't matter because what it's about to me like symbolism the whole the whole purpose of it to me is to work you know work like in an almost like magical or mystical way on the reader for the reader to be aware of aware of the resonance without being aware of it for it to have meaning without that meaning being um, explicit or being e- easily easily known and so I am and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of writers are resistant to talking about um, intent when it comes to metaphor and symbolism. The reason that I tend to do it, well, there are a few reasons, but but one is that I, I think that when you don't acknowledge the reality of, of, of metaphor and the fact that it's a consideration for most writers, you sort of... Uh, it, it, it sort of becomes like a weapon in this war against critical reading, like a weapon in this war against like high school English class. <laughs> um, and I, I, I don't want to be a weapon in that war uh, because I think high school English classes are actually really important. And I think learning to learning to read critically in a, in a broad sense is important, like learning to read 
Oh, come on. You're faster than that, Anoma. Oh, that's frustrating. There was a little bit of a lack of communication there that I thought could have been dealt with better. And now we're in the 80th minute. And we're going to... Oh, and then Lua Lua, unfortunately, made a very bad pass. And I'm trying not to be negative about him, but I'm just telling you the facts. Oh, but then John Green didn't do a good job there. Now, now we are really penned in, and this is trouble. This is big trouble. All right. Calm, patient buildup. I don't think that you need to be overly concerned with becoming a better critical reader. Um, or like a, a, a reader of metaphor anyway. Because I think it happens naturally. We're taking off Wula Wula because he's tired and bringing on Alpha Deacon. I think that it happens naturally in the sense that if you read a lot, you don't need to read with an eye. For, well, as I said earlier, you don't need to read a lot. You don't need to read with an eye for metaphor for metaphor to work on you. But I think if you read a lot, if you continue to read a lot, you'll 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 likely notice some of the ways that metaphor works on you. But I actually think the critical thing is um, when when reading is not like seeing the symbols it's not like uh i don't think reading is like a uh you know it's not about decoding in that sense it's not do i get a free kick there because i was unjustly maligned or did they get a free kick because they were unjustly maligned oh the game is over so just keep reading that's my advice it's a one one tie you know, it's not a bad result for us, to be honest. I mean, obviously, you don't want to be losing to West Brom, but we didn't lose to West Brom. We tied them. And uh, I, for one, am full of uh, hope. We just need to finish, like, 10th this season and get another transfer window. That's what we really need. All right. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.